let's take a look at gas laws. So first, you know, from your reading, you should know the kinetic molecular theory. So essentially, this is just the theory that describes what gases are like and how they behave. So gases are very small particles. They're moving fast and they're moving all of the time. They're very, very far apart with very little attraction to each other. And the average kinetic energy or the energy of their motion is proportional to their temperature in Kelvin. So particles in a gas are zipping around. They're constantly zipping all over the place. If you think about looking around the room you're in, you can think about the, those particles are constantly bouncing off the walls and going all over the place. All of these types of these principles of the kinetic molecular theory help us to derive some different equations and relationships between various measurements we can do on gases. So gases, we're going to look at a few different relationships between variables for gases. We're going to look at inverse relationships. So as a reminder from your math class, inverse variables are where one increases, the other decreases. So they go in opposite directions. Direct variables, so they both increase or both decrease together. So we'll look at examples of each of these. For the gas laws, we're going to look at a few different gas laws here. Uh, so I'll show you the simulator in just a moment. There's Boyle's law, which looks at the relationship between pressure and volume. So when we're talking about gas laws, we're most often thinking about pressure, or P. Pressure we can see in, in units of atmospheres, uh, millimeters of mercury, uh, inches of mercury. These are two different units, so do be careful about that. Um, bar. There's a whole bunch of different units of pressure, so you just want to make sure that you're very careful about pressure. V is your volume. So volume is typically measured in milliliters or liters. You are going to have to be very careful about units throughout all of this. T is your temperature. This one, it's fairly convenient because we only use one unit of temperature for gas laws, and that's Kelvin. Always, the temperature must be in Kelvin. If you end up with the temperature in anything else, convert it to Kelvin. We'll be happy. N is the uh, number of moles of gas. So we, these are the main variables that we're going to be looking at for gases. Pressure, volume, temperature, and the number of moles of gas. So let's take a look at that gas loss simulator. So you have the, the link to this in your, in your course. Uh, it only shows Boyle's Law, Charles Law, and Gay-Lussac's Law. Boyle's Law relates pressure and volume. And so we can see the, the starting point. We've got pressure and volume. I'm going to increase my pressure. And notice that as I click up, I'm increasing the pressure. So the pressure is going up. The volume here is going down. So these variables are related inversely. So as I increase pressure, my volume goes down. If I decrease pressure, then my volume needs is going to go up. This is the same principle behind why if you let a balloon go and it goes up into the air, it eventually will pop because you, as you get lower pressure higher up, the volume of the balloon is going to increase and increase and increase until finally it pops. Charles Law, we're looking at relationship between uh, temperature and volume. So as I increase my temperature, notice that the volume is also increasing. So temperature and volume are directly related. Guy-Lussac's law, we're looking at temperature and pressure. So if I increase my temperature, 
you can see that the pressure is also increasing. It's a linear positive relationship. So these are directly related. Some additional gas laws that we're looking at. So the combined gas law, this one we have uh, quite a complex set of uh, variables, P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. We have the ideal gas law. We also have the molar volume at STP. Uh, these first two I'm going to go into a little bit more in depth in a separate video. Uh, the molar volume at STP, this just tells us that one mole of gas at STP is equal to 22.4 liters. So that tells us the volume of gas for one mole at STP is consistently 22.4 liters. STP is the standard temperature and pressure. So you do know to make sure that you are specifically at STP when you use this molar volume. You cannot use this molar volume at any other temperature or any other pressure. So standard temperature and pressure, the temperature is, so T is zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. The standard pressure is one atmosphere. So if you are at any other condition, you cannot use this relationship. But if you are at STP, this is a very quick and easy way to do a calculation of the volume of a gas. The reason why this is so useful is STP, our standard temperature and pressure, this is a pretty good estimate of where we live most of our lives. So the temperature and the pressure that we have consistently around us isn't that far off. So one atmosphere is the pressure at uh, sea level, uh, standard day, and temperature, zero degrees Celsius, eh, that's a little cold, but it, it tends to give us a good estimate. So STP is, is pretty useful, but only in specific circumstances.